Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Section 8.1, which goes over percents, sales tax, and discounts, but mainly percents. Uh, this is an incredibly important section for this course uh, because we apply percents later on in Chapter 8 and throughout the rest of the course, and just a general understanding of how percents, sales tax, and discounts works is really, really useful in the uh, in the real world. So. We're going to go through every uh, objective here, uh, so except for maybe the last one. Um, so basics of percent. So percent. Percent is the result of expressing numbers as part of 100. The word percent means per 100, okay, or out of 100. That's what I the way I think of percent. The word percent, by definition, means out of 100. So if we say 84%, that means 84 out of 100. So expressing a fraction as a percent. So if we need to be able to convert all these things to a percent, so if we have a fraction, we divide the numerator by the denominator and multiply by 100. This is done by moving the decimal point two places to the right, or you can just do it in your calculator, multiply it by 100, and it'll do it for you, and then put the percent side in there. So if you wanted 5 eighths as a percent, you divide 5 by 8, you get 0.625, you multiply that by 100, which moves the decimal two spots to the right, and you get 62.5 percent. Pretty simple. If you're not comfortable moving the decimal, just do the multiplication by 100 in your calculator. Nobody will judge you. Um, let's say we have a decimal. We want to express that as a percent. So then we just we already have the decimal, so we just multiply by 100, uh, which they say move the decimal two places to the right, which is the same as multiplying by 100, and attach a percent sign. So if we have 0.47 as a percent, then it's 47 percent. But believe it or not, a lot of times we're going to need to express a percent as a decimal number so that we can use it in a formula. So this is going to be the most important one. The, the main one is fractions, converting fractions to percents, and converting percents to decimals. So when we uh, express a percent as a decimal number, then we move the decimal point two places to the left, also known as dividing by 100. So you could just divide the number by 100 and get the answer. So if we have 19% and we divide that by 100, that moves the decimal two spots to the left, and you get 0.19. Uh, this period here at the end is just a period for the problem. Um, and then 180%, if you move the decimal two spaces, two spaces to the left or divide by 100, you get 1.80. So this is going to be a common thing that we're going to do. All right, and a lot of uh, applications involving percent are based on the following formula. A, or I like to call it the result, is, a per, is which is equal sign, is a percent of B. The big thing here, when we're, when we're uh, plugging in this percent, this percent P has to be a decimal. It has to be a decimal, so please remember that. So, uh, of, also, a percent of something means to multiply. That's a huge thing here. So we have to have a percent as a decimal times a number gives us the result. This time, uh, the, the thing that they're saying here is we use this formula to determine sales tax collected by states, counties, cities on sales items to customers. So another way of looking at it is A, is the sales tax amount is equal to the tax rate as a decimal times the item cost. It's a percent of the item's cost. So it says, suppose that the local sales tax rate is 7.5% and you purchase a bicycle for $894. How much tax is paid and how much or what would be the bicycle's total cost? So this is a pretty important application just to see how much you're actually going to totally pay and how much tax you're paying. So uh, in order to do a percent times a number, you need to convert that to a decimal. So 7.5%, if you move the decimal two spots to the left, or divide it by 100, you'll get 0.075. 0.075 times 894 gives us 6705. Remember to round that to the nearest cent. And then um, 6705 is the tax. Then the total cost is just you add the tax on. So 894 plus 6705 is 961.05. The bicycle's total cost is 961.05. Um, a lot of times you'll see discounts to see uh, you'll see discounts and sales and stuff like that. So um, the discount amount is just the discount rate times the original price. This is very much like tax, but just we're going to be subtracting it at the end. So it says a computer with original price of fourteen sixty is on sale at fifteen percent off. What is the discount's amount? What is the computer's sale price? 
So in order to do this, if you want to figure out the discount amount, you just find 15% of 1460. So you, in order to do 15% of 1460, you convert 15% to a decimal, multiply by 1460, and you get $219. The discount amount is $219. So to figure out what the computer sale price is, we're just going to subtract the 219 discount from the sale or from the actual price or the original price, excuse me, and we get 1241. So the computer sale price is 1241. Sometimes also we'll be doing percent increase or percent decrease. This is a different formula than the basic one that we use here. So I use this a lot of times. A is a percent of B to figure out a lot of problems, okay? So um, in order to use this, I need to, uh, when we're given a percent, we apply the percentage by multiplying um, and then figure out the, the amount. So that's, that's a basic formula when we're given a percent. But when we want to know what a percent, when we want to figure out the percent, the percent increase or percent decrease, then it's basically this fraction. You figure out this fraction, which is the actual amount of increase or the amount of decrease divided by the original amount. And then the last step is to convert this ratio or this decimal into a percent by multiplying by 100. So let's look at an example. It says in 2000, the world population was approximately 6 billion. The data are, are from the United Nations Family Planning Program are based on optimistic or pessimistic expectations for sex, successful control of human population growth. So they have these different projections of what the population will be at, uh, over a period of time from 2000 to 2150. So problem A, it says find the percent increase in the world population from 2000 to 2150 using the high projection data, this one, this blue one. So using the formula here, we're gonna figure out the actual amount of increase and divide by the original amount. The original amount being six billion. So to do that, we do the percent increase is the amount of increase. So it went from 30 billion. So 30 billion is what it ended up at and it started at six billion. So we do 30 billion minus 6 billion, and we divide by the original 6 billion. So 30 minus 6 is 24. 24 divided by 6 is 4. To convert, and then you just divide this, 4 divided by 1 is just 4, and then to convert that to a percent, multiply by 100, and it gives us 400%. Since this numerator is positive, this represents a projected increase. So the projected percent increase in the world population is 400%. That's extremely significant if that trend continues. All right, what about the decrease if we look at this low projection here? So we start at 6 billion and maybe in 2150 we have 4 billion. So percent decrease, just uh, the same thing. What's the amount of decrease? Well, we're, it, we really should be doing four minus six to show that it went down to negative two. Um, but as long as you just basically say there's a decrease at the end, it doesn't really matter what the order of the subtraction is as long as you know it's a decrease. So, but the original population was 6 billion. So there's a difference of 2 um, from 4 billion to 6 billion. And so the decrease of 2 divided by 6 years is 1 third. Type that in your calculator and multiply by 100. So 1 divided by 3 times 100 is 33.33%. So 33.33% is the projected decrease in world population. So those are the general types of problems we'll see. And we'll, um, we'll be applying percents using this basic formula here. And then we'll be finding percent changes of increase and decrease using these formulas here, where you multiply by 100 at the end. Good luck. We'll see you next time.